So with the engine flipped over, I'm gonna go ahead and install, I have a brand new BMW OEM water pump, gasket and some hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this on the front just so that blocks off this port. And then we could go ahead and get started with the head. So I just want to throw this clip in here because a lot of people skip over it. But if you had machine work done to your block and to the timing cover, in this case, the stock gasket will actually protrude a few thousands because we took that off the deck surface. So since we dropped this, we're also going to have to cut a little bit off of the gasket. And this applies to both sides. So this side and the other side. And I'll take a picture of it right here. So as you can see, just a little bit above the deck surface, I'm going to come back with a razor blade and actually just denib this. That way it's the same height. Also taking a look here, you have the part number for the cylinder head dowels, and this basically just locates the head. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these on six and then diagonally on cylinder two, and that should be good to go. Taking a look at the head gasket before we install it, we went for a cut ring and not an MLS. And what separates the two is these stainless steel rings, as you can see. So as you clamp this gasket down, they actually bite into the aluminum cylinder head because it's soft. It's almost like an O-ringed block if you're familiar with that. And then as far as the hardware, we just went with some standard M11 uh, ARPs. If we take a look closely, there's three grooves on this side, and then the opposite side is smooth. And the reason why this is important is because the groove side needs to go up towards the cylinder head. Like I said, as you clamp this down, it bites itself into the cylinder head because it's a softer metal. It is aluminum, but it is crucial that you install these correctly. A couple more things to note before we install the cylinder head. As you can see here, I installed the head stud for number two and number six. I also went ahead and installed the dowels and this will just locate the head as I'm pushing it down. So I do like to do those two. As far as the gasket, it's already denibbed, like I said before. And I'm gonna go ahead and install some RTV on both sides here and here. Now with the RTV in place, we could go ahead and take our gasket only without the firing rings. I went ahead and rubber banded the timing chain cover, and I'm just going to go ahead and slide this on over the head studs onto the block itself. And then I'm going to push it around where the dowels are just so it seats it flat. And then I'm going to go ahead and just tap everything into place, make sure it's not pinched anywhere, there's no binding. Just make sure it's perfectly flat with the block. This is your last chance to take a look at the gasket. Now, once this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and install the firing rings themselves. Again, groove side facing up towards the cylinder head. And I'll just push these into their position. One thing to note is that sometimes people order these too small and these will actually contact the pistons. So it is a good idea to rotate the engine, make sure that these do not hit the pistons. Other than that, Pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to go ahead and just install the rest of these. Just take your time. Make sure that they're perfectly in place and flat. You also don't want them overlapping. So if you're working by yourself like I am, what I like to do is actually rubber band the chain to the timing chain guides. That way I can snake the head over on top of this by myself and it won't open up. It also won't like move around when I'm trying to install the cylinder head. And it's just a little trick that I like to use. Now that the head is on, I'm gonna take the ARP head studs. As you can see, I've already lubed the bottom portions of them. You could tell it's the bottom because it has this bevel on here. And then the top obviously has the Allen key again. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread these in. They just have to be hand tight.
So I'm installing these washers right now and I just wanted to show you guys what I do. So as you can see, there's a groove cut out in these heads. Obviously that's where the washer lays. And what I like to do is go around and actually add some ARP torque lube inside of there because I don't want the washer on the actual aluminum. I don't want it to add friction. When I'm torquing it, I want a proper torque measurement. So that reduces the friction and you get a better reading. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some assembly lube on there. And then I will also add some to the top of the washer so that when I install the nut on top of the washer, also the bottom of it has something to spin on and it's still not metal to metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. As you can see before I thread this down, I do put lube on the back side of it and then I also install it. So not only do I lube the threads, but I actually lube the bottom portion of the nut as well. I also just wanted to mention that these are two 30 millimeter Philister bolts. A lot of people forget these. These are the timing cover that connects the head. So what I like to do is just thread them in halfway. As you can see, they're not snug at all. I'm gonna go ahead and torque all the head studs and then I'm gonna come back and torque these. So the reason why I put these in is just so I know that it goes through the head gasket and there's no misconceptions up here. So once this is good, I'm gonna go ahead and torque these. All right, so these studs call for, I believe three, three equal steps to 105. So that would be uh, 35, 70, 105. And then also this is how I'm gonna torque it. So you start in the middle and you go in a star pattern. It's like every other ARP stud. I'm gonna go ahead and put the first torque to 30 foot pounds. All right, that was the first. This is gonna be the second. For the last torque, I'm just gonna switch over to my half inch bar just because the leverage is a little bit easier torquing these to 105. From time to time, I see some people actually miss the gasket here. And this is a bolt hole that actually goes through all the way to the timing chain tensioner and it holds it in place just like this. So if you need the part number, this is for the bolt. And then this is the gasket. So obviously these just go together.
Let's go ahead and just start throwing some accessories on just because I'm waiting on a few parts before I install the cams. So as you can see, I got the water pipe, new O-rings, oil filter housing gasket, and all the hardware. Some of them are zinc plated, some of them are new, and then a new oil pressure sensor. First part I'm gonna throw on is this water pipe. As I said, I already have the O-rings inside of here. These are specific O-rings, uh, and they are pretty expensive now. I think they're like $36 for three, which is absolutely comical, but they are specific, so kind of just have to bite the bullet on this one. As for the thermostat housing, there's an O-ring that goes here. So you're gonna insert that. This comes with your thermostat. This is a brand new Borg Warner thermostat, as you can see right here. So this can only go one way. I'll just show you this is the wrong way clearly because it doesn't sit in like this. So it's gonna seat like this. You just put it into the housing just like that. And this is gonna go on. As this goes on, you have to add the crossover pipe so these are two new O-rings. I also greased them. So that'll just slide in just like this. Now we're gonna add this, which is the engine eye, to obviously lift the engine. And you can get your hardware right here. Before I throw the filter housing back on, I just want to show you guys what I have. So this is a new pressure sensor with a crush washer, and that's going to go into this hole right here. So that's going to be threaded in. The only reason why I have to put the plugs in before is because this bolt comes in contact with this plug, so I won't be able to tighten it um, and vice versa. So anyway, these are the three plugs. This hole, this hole, and this hole all need to be plugged before I go ahead and throw this on. So I just installed the gasket. I also made sure the mating area is free of anything and I installed two new dowels. So one here, one here. This is just gonna go on just like this. With the new dowels, you may need to just tap it into place. And that sits like that. So the hardware is different lengths and the biggest one goes up here. The two medium sized bolts then go here and here. And then the rest of the three are just the smaller ones. So they go on the bottom two and the top right. Before the head went to the machine shop, I took out all of the oil screens, so I'm just throwing these back in right now. This part is kind of annoying. Here's the part number if you guys need it. There is five of them. I already inserted one. So as you can see, it sits right in there. These ports are open. And these are called strainers, even though they don't really strain anything. These are just meant to actually catch the valve shim. So if you ever drop one, it just holds it from falling into the oil pan. But anyway, the best way I found out to do this is just take a pair of needle nose pliers 
and you just grab the middle and you kind of slide one end in as you slide the other end in. I'm gonna try and get it on camera, it's just a little bit tight. We're going to start off with this front portion. So this has the two front cam journals. Also, it has um, Vanos oil lines. So we have to plug this one, not plug it, but we have to add an O-ring just to seal it to this block right here. And then it also has two dowels. So these dowels are going to fit into these provisions right here. So just make sure you don't forget the O-ring. Now that we have that all in place, I'm gonna go ahead and install this. This is an upgraded upper chain guide. So this is the Bezian, or Bison, however you pronounce it. And this is the stock. So as for this, you have your hex head bolt. I believe this is a M10. And then you need your crush washer. And essentially it's just gonna slide in just like this. So what I'm gonna do is take the, take the chain, move it over to this side, just so it's out of the way. And this provision right here, it's gonna go in like this, and then you have to slide it through. And then once it's in place, you can go ahead and tighten it up. If you have it in the right place, it should be right in front of the lower chain guide. So as you can see, if we inserted the tensioner here, it would bring these two out. So this moves and it sits right in the top of that one. 